Sometimes a day comes along that seems possessed by a certain shade of magic. What an opening line. Granted, Marie Lou does have a way with opening lines, but still, what an opening line. The Kingdom of Bach by Marie Lou follows young Nanarol Mozart as she struggles with being a musical prodigy in a world where women are nothing more than wives and mothers. And Nanarol and Wolferel find the Kingdom of Bach and it opens doors for Nanarol to finally succeed and be great. But does she? Does she not? I don't know. Read the book. Um, that's why this is a non-spoilery part. It is loosely based on the true story of Mozart and the fact that he did have a sister who composed music, which I thought was really cool because I had never heard of that. Granted, I'm not big into classical music or anything, but I had never known that that was something, and I think that's a great like female empowerment move. Um, and Marie Lu is one of my favorite authors. I've read, I think, almost everything she's written except for the Batman book that she wrote as part of like a collaboration with other authors. But aside from that, I've read the whole Legend trilogy multiple times. Um, I've read the entire Young Elites trilogy. Uh, what else is she written? I've written, I've read the Warcross duology. So I was very happy to get another Marie Lu book um, to read, and it was very good, and I highly recommend it. Books, TV, music, and movies. All things that make a big impact on everyone. I'm constantly gushing about my latest read to anyone who will listen, so I figured I'd turn my rambling into something coherent that people might actually listen to, which means no tuning out halfway through. I'm Maya Ghosh, and this is my take. Okay, so as always in the spoilery section, we are starting on the writing, and I feel like this book was very good to be written to be turned into a movie. I don't know, like, what makes me think that. It's just the way it's written, I feel like it could be a really good movie, and just already from the writing, I could really see it coming to life on a movie screen very easily. And I feel like this is the case with a lot of Marie Lu books, and I love it. I love her, as I said in the beginning. She's one of my faves. Um, and it's so descriptive because the Kingdom of Back is such a amazing, fantastical place, and she does such a good job of describing everything and letting the readers really feel as if, you know, they are standing next to those trees with their roots in the ceiling and trying to avoid the pools of water and the castle and everything. Like, she does a really good job setting the scene and making you really feel as if you are there. Um, and it's from what I like to call To Kill a Mockingbird point of view, um, probably because To Kill a Mockingbird was the first book that I read that had this point of view, but it's where Nanarelle is narrating as an adult looking back on her past and her youth, which is the same thing with To Kill a Mockingbird, right? Scout is narrating as an adult looking back on her youth. Um, so I like to say it's from To Kill a Mockingbird point of view. Um, and that is all I really have on the writing. With Marie Lou, I don't know why, I just can never analyze her writing. Like, I never go into it looking to analyze her writing, and I I mean, I don't go into many many books looking to analyze the writing, but with some books, it's just really easy to do that on the off chance, and, like, my brain's been trained by AP Lang and stuff to pick up all those different, you know, diction choices and figurative language and all that, but with Marie Lou, I really don't do that, and I really just kind of dive in and get really invested into the story so that is all i will have to say on the writing um the first thing i want to point out non-writing wise is the sexism that nanarelle faces especially from her father i hate her father there's going to be a whole point where i just shit on her father because i hate him um with her having to like mind wolf Earl, like there's a mother there like it's not her job especially when she's really young to take care of her little brother like she's a child too and her, her father being annoying and not letting for her forget that like there is an end date to her playing music and composing and all, i mean not that he knows she's composing but playing music and all that stuff like let the kid be a kid live her life like let her pursue her dreams for as long as she can society is already putting enough stress on her to be a mother and have children and all that like and the castle scene where Wolf Earl runs off and 
Sebastian goes to help Nana and it, um, her dad's just like, oh, she'll be a mother soon enough. Like, she doesn't have to do that. Or Sebastian doesn't have to go help her. Like, what the hell? Excuse me. Like, no, not fair. Even if you didn't want, even if you didn't want Sebastian to go help her and you wanted it to be a teaching moment, why do you have to point out like, oh, she'll be a mother and that's why? Like, no, oh, maybe she can bond with her brother. Maybe we think she understands what her brother's going through and that's why. But no, you're going to make it about her and her aging. I hate her father. And the fact that like he takes her compositions and then it's like, oh, it's fine. Oh, da, da, da. Doesn't even mention it to her. Just, just like steals it and says nothing about it. And it causes a rift between the siblings. Like, what the hell? He's so annoying. Like, I typically have one character I really centrally hate in a book, and this was it for me. Like, I hated him. He was the villain of all villains, even though Hyacinth was, like, technically the villain of the book. I hated her dad so much more. Okay, so now I wanted to transition into talking about, like, the kingdom of back itself. Um, first, I want to say I called Hyacinth for being shady early on. Um... And I was, like, kind of trying to shake Nanarell because I was like, why didn't she see it? I mean, every time she asked him a question, he deflected and never told her anything and never explained anything about himself. And if you're going to be, like, that shady and that, like, not forthcoming about stuff, like, mm, red flags. Um, so I really wanted to just, like, grab her by the shoulders and be like, he's shady, don't trust him, which was annoying. And then there's a couple, like, tropes that happened in the Kingdom of Back that I was like, these are overdone, but I kind of love it. Um, the, like, Sea Witch Siren thing was overdone, but she did save it by, like, surprise, Sea Witch is actually the queen. I did like that. Um, and the whole, like, she gets scared when she rides up on the swing and, like, falls into him kind of thing is a little overdone. But, I mean, again... We love Marie, Marie Lou, and I love a cliche. Like, I'm the last person to be saying anything about cliches. All of my friends will tell you I read too many romance novels to, like, judge. Um, and I loved it. I loved the romance. Though I was not happy that she was kissing him. I wanted her to be kissing the guy from the performance that she did who came up to her, which I'm convinced that he is her husband and i refuse to accept any other narrative even though it's not part of the kingdom of back sorry moving on um i love like the strong female empowerment since we get at the end with her and the queen um that was just a great thing and a great thing for the book which really is about female empowerment which marie lou has said and i was very happy that we got that moment of the two of them storming the castle taking down hyacinth and like really just sticking it to them and just showing like what female empowerment is and how you can be strong and even Nanarell who knows that the end of her music career is coming and stuff was able to be that strong and overthrow him and be like no I'm gonna pick my family and save Wolf for all and I know what I want out of my life and I was very happy about that um and looking at is the kingdom real I feel like it has to be real because Wolf for all keeps getting sick like Hyacinth's hold on the real world has to be real therefore the kingdom has to be real um but also like she impacts it with her mind which is weird because like she thinks something and then it happens so like i want to believe that it's real but also i know like it could also be a symbol for like imagination and how far imagination can take you um so i think the ambiguity is fun um and i I really like it, and of course, I'm going to believe it's real. I'm going to take that narrative, but it's really fun that we get this alternate reality and how much that alternate reality impacts the real world, I think, is a really cool thing. Um, and like I said before, I think it represents Nanarell's imagination and how far she'll go in her life um, with being able to break out the queen and stuff, representing how she's going to break free and stuff. And I think that she's also, honestly, more like the queen than the princess because i feel like she's imprisoned more by an outside force and like but she's also more ready to break free and more like willing to do stuff whereas the princess is like staying in her little tower the queen's like trying to convince people to like come save her and come help her and stuff so i think that nanarelle is more the queen than the princess but that's just a personal observation i had 
Um, Wolfro and Nanarell's relationship was so nice, but also made me so mad because every time they got mad at each other, I was like, look, y'all are really the only two you have because nobody understands the pressure you both are getting from your father. Nanarell has nobody else to protect her secret that she's writing music. Like, they should be thick as thieves the entire time, and all of this drama from the outside should really just bring them closer together, and I hated that there was conflict between the two of them. But I understood that, like, there had to be conflict because, in the end, Wolfro is the only thing standing in front of the Annarelle's dreams and stuff, so, like, I get it, but I was very mad, and I really just wanted them to be happy and be okay and, like, fight the kingdom of back together. But also in the end, I was very glad that Nanarol like figured out life and chose Wolf Rowell and was like, no, I'm going to save him because if that hadn't have happened, I think I would have been pissed and hated this book because I really loved their sibling relationship and wanted it to thrive. And I think that by her picking him, it allowed it to thrive, even if she didn't seem completely like not didn't seem completely okay with it but like you know there is a time gap where they don't really talk and she hadn't seen him much before his death but we know that that sibling relationship still has to be there because she sacrificed so much for him she has to have proved her love for him and internalized that love for him too um and then looking at the end of the novel right like i said i'm choosing to believe the guy from her performance i think his name is johan is her husband um that's the only narrative i will accept um, and I like how the story comes full circle, right? We get the first chapter of her being like, listen, I'm going to tell you a story that you already know, but it's one you've never heard kind of thing. And then at the end, we do get to see some like reminiscing of her past in the kingdom of back, especially with the map and everything. But then we see where we started the book, where she takes her daughter and is like, look, I'm going to tell you a story. It's one you've already heard, but it's one you've also never heard before. I like that that comes full circle and we get to see that because I think a lot of times like it doesn't necessarily happen and that we don't really get full circle and like kind of prologue stuff like that never really comes around like especially in Twilight and stuff the prologues literally had nothing to do with anything half the time and so I like that it comes full circle and we get to see it and it, it ends the book very nicely like I wasn't mad or sad at the ending you know even though he dies and stuff like and there's a huge time gap that was never um explained I'm okay with the ending and I really like the ending I think it was peaceful and it was a very nice way to end after all of the drama that had happened in the last like little bit of the book with the battle and the kingdom of back and all that stuff I really liked it um so the ending was really good and honestly it was a great book I loved it and it was kind of slow to start I will say that um I don't know why it's a little slow to start maybe it was just me that I was a little slow to start it but it was really nice to see a standalone from Marie Lou because besides that Batman book that again I never read she's never written a standalone um you know Legend was a trilogy that then got a fourth which I love Rebel um The Young Elites was a trilogy Warcross was a duology so everything always kind of had that feeling of like there's more to it with a Marie Lu book and I'd always expect it like I'm gonna read this and then have to wait and want to read more whereas this book like it was a really nice standalone it really nicely wrapped up very well at the end and I really liked that we got something different from Marie Lu it's not it has that fantasy aspect of hers that is so prevalent in Legend and Young Elites and kind of in Warcross um but it was very very like even though it was historical it was like contemporary historical kind of thing right where we're living in that historical society and besides the kingdom of back everything else is normal and so i kind of liked that it was a little bit different from the like completely different world like we got a taste of the real world and we had this fantasy world and i like how she blended them together and Honestly, it was just a little something different from Marie Lu that I really liked to see and I really enjoyed it. And anybody who's read anything else by Marie Lu, I think you would enjoy this book. And anybody who's not read anything by Marie Lu, um, Legend holds a special place in my heart, so I'd recommend starting with Legend. But this is a very nice book if you want an introduction to her writing because it's a standalone. There's no attachment, it's just one book. It's it, it's just a really good book. So yeah. I have been Maya Ghosh, and this has been my take on The Kingdom of Back by Marie Lou. Thanks.
Thanks for listening.